to the stock market morning prep video for Thursday, March the 12th. Another consolidation day. We did have some crazy price action early on in the morning, and uh, pretty much we uh, tested the lows, tested the highs, and we uh, literally just uh, stayed in a range pretty much most of the day. So markets are waiting for something, and eventually it will vacate the area. So until then, you got to know what the markets are doing and uh, when to be active and when to uh, really sit on your hands. And now's the time to really be sitting on your hands, guys. Uh, it is just wacky price action, that's for sure. If you're a scalper, you're in heaven. Um, but aside from that, it is really just crazy price action. And, and it's quick and it stops and then it just bases all day. So, you know, let me run down the numbers. Dow Jones down 11, NASDAQ up 16, which actually didn't do too bad. Um, S&P up 57 cents. Terrible. Russell 2000 up $4.32. That's, uh, you know, again, very quiet price action. It's a lot of chop, a lot of sloppy price action early on and then it subsides and then we just stay in the pattern pretty much most of the day so I'm not gonna bore you with some um, a bunch of indicators nothing has changed you know we still remain cautious we still want to be buying what the trend is and it is right now up uh, but a lot of these stocks are extended so we like to buy stocks that have pulled back uh, whatever the case may be some good quality stocks or if you're looking to short something short relative weakness to what the market is doing for the day is very important um, you do not want to be looking to pick a top uh, right now um, you know as we all know topping is a process so you know this could take quite some time and overboard we can stay overboard for quite some time so the best thing to do trade the best setups not saying you can't take a short during the day but um, you know don't get stubborn remember the markets are made to fool the masses and that's exactly what the markets are are, are basically paid to do so um, keep your stops tight keep your trails going and uh, I would not be looking to add to a position even though we go a little higher we might probe a little higher but eventually um, there will be a downside resolution guys and markets just don't go straight up and we are at some major extensions all right so I've got a bunch of emails and very good emails uh, stating mark you know you keep saying that you're still in the bear market in gold how do you know what do you look for when um, gold is in a bull market and or a bear market so it's very quite it's very simple guys uh, gold monthly chart I look at an 8 20 50 and 200 pretty much standard right but when the 8 crosses over the, the uh, 20 in this case it did in 2002 that marked the bull market and look what happened we had a bull market we had a huge running gold up until last year when we crossed below the 8 and 20 and now we are still below the 8 and 20 and all this is a, is a retracement rally when we have two closes above the 50 month moving average I would basically say be safe to say that we have resumed its uptrend but right now we are just literally just chopping around here we have a double bottom we had a bear flag we failed and now we're having another bear flag which more than likely we should fail at one point in time that does not mean that we can't see 1450 in gold and still be in the bear market remember you want to get at least a couple of closes above so that means there's still a lot of work to be done um, in gold so just keep that in mind it's very simple 820 monthly cross above and or below that'll mark your bull and bear markets all right so I just wanted to get that point across a lot of um, got a lot of emails and you know very valid emails too as well okay EM we talked about China we talked about copper uh, really getting decimated the last several days uh, banks taking uh, copper as collateral now getting liquidated as well so there's a lot of issues uh, and and a lot of problems that may arise coming out of China so what does that mean what does that tell me as a trader is that hey you know we have red flags throughout our US markets the DAX is actually rolled over we have some uh, other world markets that are not doing so hot as well we have geopolitical uh, mess out in Russia uh, and the Ukraine. I mean, any it's like a big boiling pot. Anything could happen at any given moment. We could be you wake up in the markets are down 20, 30 hands. And I really don't want to go through that. So, what do I do? Again, day trade, trade the best setups until once we get a good, decent pullback. Remember, we had several weeks back. We had a five percent pullback, and we took it back in five days and then some. We've been rallying for 22, 23 trading days. So uh, again, nothing goes straight up or straight down. So all of these little red flags has me being cautious of the market. Okay, not that you can't trade it. You just to pick your best, pick the best spots possible. And EEM is something that we're going to be watching because if copper's starting to break down, China needs that copper prices to be elevated otherwise there could be some massive liquidations in some of their banks we don't want to see that now could it be all hearsay absolutely could anything really uh, come by it 
Probably not. But you can't deny it, and you can't know that it is out there, that something could happen. So you just, just be a little cautious, that's all. Um, quickly on the VIX, just want to let you see the VIX here. Not much happening, but again, VIX is staying right in the middle of this range. Bollinger Bands are starting to tighten, so it looks like there's pressure building. One way or the other, it's going to resolve itself. It doesn't tell you which way, but it is going to resolve itself one way or the other. So let's go into the chart segment. Here's copper. Here's a daily chart of copper. Now you can see we put this long-legged doji. Now it's indecision. Yes, we had sellers and buyers fighting to, uh, to close right in the middle. So we had no outcome here. Now, this is a bullish, pa a bu a bullish candle if it takes out the high of this candle of 298.11. Okay, if it does take that on a closing basis, you probably have retracement rally back up to the 20, wherever that may land. Okay, however, um, that may subside itself a little bit. And also, we got to look at the yen, right? What did the yen do? Um, the yen uh, didn't do too much uh, in the in the morning. It rallied, but look what happened here. Let me just bring this over for um, let me bring this over for today. So this is today. Okay, so what we have is. Um, you had a, a pullback, uh, and then right around here on Wednesday, early morning Wednesday, we started rallying, we held, and then sure enough, we held within the upper end of the range. So just keep that in mind. We want to watch the end. Let's take a look at what's copper doing now. Remember, uh, I mentioned this morning, um, yesterday morning, Dr. Copper, that's what they call it, the industrial metal, really wasn't such a good barometer of what equities are doing. It was a just even a little over a year, a year and a half ago. Uh, but now when you see something like getting getting uh, decimated like this, that's something that you need to pay attention to. All right. So let's go into the ES. ES, hourly chart. Here's our major extension, that 1272 extension at 1877, 1880. We did hit a high 1887.50 on Thursday, and we clearly reversed, and we haven't seen it yet. Now, we could just chop around here, and then we could start, we could do, we, we could have a resumption of the trend. Um, 1870, right up in here, right underneath this pivot from the other day. If it takes that out, we're going to see a big flush up to the 1877. So, either way, just keep that in mind, okay? Now, let's go right into our, um, let's go right into our other charts here. All right, so we have the, um, we're stacked up here in the spiders, the GLD, and the TLT. And again, here's another red flake. So, it's just another... Another um, uh, stack of information here that needs you, the trader, to be cautious here. We still have not broken out of this, um, this downtrend, this uptrend channel, excuse me. Uh, we're breaking out in gold, and uh, TLT is not breaking down. So, um, again, fear looks like there is a little bit of fear looking for a spot for protection. Now, spiders. We have a bull flag here. Uh, it looked like a flag was breaking down, but you know what? This isn't a, a really deep channel, so I'm going to put this as a bull flag. And uh, now if we break out of this bull flag, I think we're going to challenge the highs here. If we break down, your next low is going to be the 50-day moving average, okay? So you can see here we're still elevated. Fine was okay today, but really not much going on. So let's just, um, you know, again, let's keep an eye on it. Now here's really going to be the game changer. If the transports can rally, now we had... Crude oil inventories uh, this morning was a big build. Um, so that should bode well for transports, and, and that will probably put a, a, a boost in, um, in U.S. equities if the transports start to rally. Okay, so now let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at the IWMs. This is a little bit weaker. Uh, I'd like to see this break back above the uptrend line and then start challenging the highs here. Uh, but again, weaker volume. Uh, we have a little bit of a, yeah, I'll still call this a bull flag here, but on the 20, we need to get back above this area, and then we can start moving. Now, if we get all of the indices starting to move, and our leaders start to move up, again, with the transports, um, then I think you might have at least a challenge of the highs, and then we would reevaluate um, what the uh, markets are looking to do. Here's the Q's. Q's had a better day out of all of them, uh, and again, it is just basically sideways for uh, probably a good three to four trading weeks. Uh, and as you can see here, we really haven't gone anywhere. Okay, so let's just uh, keep an eye on the cues here. Maybe technology starts to pick up. Diamond's the weaker of the two, the worst uh, bearish pattern. We got a bearish rising wedge here. We did break the, um, the bearish rising wedge, so maybe a back test and then fail again. But it is a laggard, so it, it, it's okay if this thing has a, is weaker of the five. Now, GLD, we broke out of our little consolidation area here. You see the Bollinger Band starting to tighten. And as you can see here, um, 
this uh, is now gone. And now this thing should start to challenge. We, we're above the two, 200. So the, really the next area is going to be basically right around here, that 137 area. So we got a good six points to the upside. No trade in GLD. I have no trade in, in oil at the moment. Oil is getting a little bit more interesting. But remember, we had a big build. So I think oil can go a little bit lower before it starts to uh, start to uh, start basin here. Okay. Now, what I do want to show you in oil stocks is OIH, right? We had um, again a build in uh, in crude oil inventories, but and we had a big pull in right into the 50. This is perfect. So this is something that now it's gonna it's it, I'm I'm excited about a little bit more. I would love to see it break down and and try to get to the uh, to the 200 day moving average. And here is um, SLB, perfect. Back testing this band. If we can base for another day or so and then start to break out, we could start getting involved in some SLB. Now, here's the oil and gas service stock, uh, sector, right? The oil and gas. Um, natural gas is going to come into play on the long side in the coming weeks. Uh, as the, mar as the uh, summer uh, starts to creep in the spring, uh, natural gas will start to rise a little bit. And plus, we had a huge, huge winter as far as being cold one of the coldest on record um, and there's a lot of natural gas that's been used up right so when oil is high uh, what are these oil drillers going to do they're going to start looking for more oil than natural gas so there'll be less of natural gas and that would drive the prices of natural gas higher so um, natural gas gasoline uh, a lot of the refiners you know so that's going to put a, a good good bid into these refiner stocks and also natural gas stocks well this is valero it's a refiner look what i've been saying this has been going up up and up it just has not let me in the stock you know we saw this from here was this was a great area if we would lead a little bit of a pullback it exploded higher three-day consolidation and it's gone now we need a little bit of a pullback so i'll set the next pullback up but valero is definitely one of my favorites um xle another good one here guys another good one but again now it has broken from consolidation so i don't want to buy it right here i like to see it base a little bit get back in this um bearish rise and wedge channel formation and then start to break out higher but xle is definitely going to be one of my favorites to look at now here's tan right we have um, a nice bull flag right nice flag low volume and we had good news coming out of solar city which is the sctY um, that propped a couple of moves, but then just gave it all back again. So you can see it's a very volatile sector. You've got to position yourself accordingly when you're using the YG. But I like this sector as well as the banks. Take a look at First Solar. Again, sitting right up in here, we took out this bearish symmetry of lower lows and lower highs, and now we started to make higher lows. And this gap here was earnings, recovered nicely, and now starting to um, kind of base around here. So First Solar is another one I like. Um, Trina Solar, TSL, doing nothing wrong here. Back above the 20-day moving average. I'd like to see it hold another day or two and then take out this high at 1658 before I get involved, at least to challenge the highs. All right, home construction. This is definitely something that I am going to be watching. Another one of my favorite would be the home builders. Now, you can see here clearly we had a really sharp decline for the last, uh, oh, maybe six or seven trading days. More, more than like, likely a bull, um, a bullish, excuse me, um, uh, a bull wedge. So once we break out of this wedge here, let's see if it can retrace higher. But I do like the home construction. Uh, better the builders. I like the builds. Here's the XHP, but I just want to show you Lenar. Um, really sold off hard. And look at it. Now came in and made a nice big engulfing candle. Uh, you know, above this high, easy to manage. Below this low would be your stops. You know, anywhere below that. You know, if you had a little bit more wiggle room on your account, I'd get it down to like 39.65. And PHM... Eh, you know, I, I like it. I do like it. i rather see it get back above the 50 and base a little bit more. I don't like the fact that it broke through that. But either way, even if you wanted to nibble in this area between the 50 and 200, you know your stops are going to be somewhere around here. Okay? Um, KBH, same thing. Um, doing okay. Um, but it's the weakest of the, of the, the few that we follow. So something like this I would just pass for now. And then let let it, let it give it more time to um, to reevaluate. Now XLF here. Now XLF, same thing. We had uh, a nice move out of this consolidation area of 2180. We did go up about four or five days. And you know, standard rule of thumb: put it in your trading plan, guys. You know, three, four days up, five days up. I wouldn't be looking to get in any stock. Okay, two, three maybe. 
But and even then, I like it. You know, come out of a base in the second, even the third day. But you have four or five days of explosive moves. I, I would really wait for a pullback like the XFL is doing. You know, Citibank back to its lows again. Now it is in a channel, right? So we want to wait for that 50 again, right? Let's let's keep an eye on that 50. That 50 is going to be the mark here. Above 50, I think you get a good shot to challenge the high. So we need to put Citibank on the watch list. Okay, uh, J.P. Morgan doing much better than Citibank, as you can see. And then we have um, Goldman Sachs. Now, Goldman is coming into a sweet spot here. Why? Well, we have a beautiful base that formed. We broke out of the base. And what are we doing? We are back testing the base and above the 50, above the 20, above the 8, and above the 200. This is ideal. A break above uh, yesterday's high of 170.24 would get me at least a long shot play. Again, the market has to be on your side, right? Because the banks follow what the market does. The market starts to sell off. There's no reason to buy the banks, okay? Just keep that in mind. And lastly, we have Apple. Now, Apple is really, I think, ready to explode. Uh, now, again, it doesn't tell us where, but since we are making higher highs and higher lows from this previous low, to me, if, I'm, uh, if I was guessing, I'd guess to the upside. And we have Bollinger Bands really, uh, really pinching. Tomorrow, we can get a real big move in Apple here. So pay attention to what Apple's doing tomorrow. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, we can start vacating this area, either move higher, at least to challenge the highs. That'll bring some longs back into play and or have an opportunity to start shorting rallies again. But again, the market needs to prove itself. Price is king. Price is what pays us. Remember that. Have a great night. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.